Hey there, guys. So, this is a video that's somewhat like something you've seen, but with a few little twists and tweaks. Now, ordinarily, I would probably present this as just your simple vinyl unboxing video, but because this particular artist that I'm going to talk about in this installment is someone that I'm A, not as equally familiar with, uh, as a lot of others, and B, one that upon delving into his personal past and history and small fan base and accolades has made me intrigued to want to talk about him, especially since I picked up one of his releases on a particular recommendation and uh, a reissue, actually. And I wanted to sort of inform others, if possible, and at the same time, if anyone wants to, you know, add to the conversation or, you know, any part of that, that makes it equally as interesting as well. So without further ado here, let's get to the artist that I want to talk about in this particular moment. Here we have the late, great Towns Van Zant. Now, this album was released in 1972, and it's, it was several, it was, this was several albums in now for Towns Van, for the career of Towns Van Zant. It's going to be odd to say the way his name flows off the tongue. And there are quite a few interesting elements to consider with Towns Van Zant. Now, before I pick this release up, most of what I had heard about him was through through name. When people said so-and-so was inspired by, you know, Towns Van Zandt's name would show up. Or their influence, their sound, kind of the thing they've got going on. Like Towns Van Zandt. I think the most close to the chest comparison that I had, I had always heard um, was through Steve Earle, the, the country, folk country musician, uh, veteran, who's, who's been around for quite some time. And he was always, uh, you know, listed as one of, uh, one of, someone who was really greatly influenced by him, so much so that his son Justin, who I'm a big fan and listener of, actually sports the metal name Towns because of, guess who? So... Obviously, I was intrigued. I heard a lot about uh, Towns from a songwriting stand standpoint anytime that he would come up in addition to being an influence was that in that genre he was just he was considered to be really an essence of very excellent songwriting, very uh, well very influential in the sort of folk country blues fusion kind of a thing. One of his one of his great influences, in fact, was Hank Williams, the original, uh, fun fact, whom when Towns passed away in 1997, he died exactly 44 years to the day that Hank Williams did. Fun fact over. And To listen to, to Towns Van Zandt right off the bat, because I've just finally gotten to delve into this, it's very easy, of course, to, to pick out the influences uh, to, to Hank. One of the songs is actually a cover of a Hank tune. You can tell right off the bat. But it's uh, Towns Van Zandt, he really he brings that sort of honky-tonk shuffle mixed with like a, a folky, pleasant, a pleasant, folky nature, and even a, you know, sort of a, a like I said, a bluesy vibe with, uh, was it the third song on the first side, German Mustard, yes, uh, it has sort of a, a bluesy edge to it. Songs are very stripped down, very acoustic, nothing too over the top about them, and what I really like listening to, to Towns is just, is hearing that, that older country element. 
Because country music, you know, as anyone who's followed the genre, it, it, it's changed, some would say, I would certainly say, drastically over the years coming into the, the modern era. And while I certainly, you know, don't, don't speak for everyone or, you know, I speak for this guy, this little ant of a guy myself, um, I would say it's drastically changed for the worst. And, you know, because I, I heard my fair share of older country music when I was a kid. Um, most notably, uh, Hank Williams, the first. And, like, Johnny Cash, uh, Chris Christopherson. And then, you know, you, you, you come up and you learn about the others, like Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings, Ray Price, so on and so forth. You hear about, about different ones. And, you know, a lot of their influence is still credited today, of course, but I think, you know, especially the main, in the mainstream realm, country music has, well, you know, people hate on it for a lot of reasons, and I think a lot of justifiable ones. It's become very drawly, very, uh, I don't know, it, it, it's developed this weird reputation to it that I think is an unfortunate stereotype that while the, you know, the the crappy side of it deserves, I think that it's still such a redeemable genre and, you know, a really beautiful genre that isn't just, you know, pedal steel guitars and twangy, nasally vocals and, you know, just really incessant stuff that isn't fun to listen to. Like, like take Justin Towns, or whom I mentioned earlier, you know, is, is a great uh, modern artist who makes music that's influenced by a variety of genres. Like, his last record um, in 2012 was... I believe it was 2012, anyway. I think it was. Uh, was... Yeah, it was, because I reviewed it on my channel. Um was a it, it it still had that element to it but he had branched to the point that and he's gone in different directions on his on each of his albums uh it had gone in more of a, a like a soul like a memphisy muscle shoals kind of a sound with like horns some brass stuff going on and he branched out and sort of changed it up and and that was another thing a great thing about old country music as well too you know, that it wasn't just stuck singularly in that one place. You know, like, Hank developed it. Hank was a forerunner of country music. And, you know, that that, it sound, that sound developed and changed. And, you know, the guys who came along later started to really branch it. You know, branch it out there and develop it into other genres. And really mix it into a very interesting fusion. And I think that's another great thing about, about this album. At least from, you know, what I've, I've heard of it so far. And... Of course, unfortunately, I think another designation to being a country musician is that you have to be incredibly screwed up um, in terms of addictions and various problems of whatever nature you choose. And Towns was certainly very uh, prone to that, suffered from many addictions, and is yet another artist whom has been drawn to my attention that when he was alive, when he was making music, his following was minuscule. It was little. It, it was it was very devoted, but it was small. He never really had any big hits, but he was that kind of guy that other artists, like, more famous than him, up to, you know, from his time to the modern era, were covering his music because they saw the beauty in it and they were struck by it. And... And that eventually got his music back out there. And it's very interesting to see how often that happens. When you see an artist who <clears throat> achieves such minimal success, but was composed of such creative brilliance all the same. And he certainly seems to be another one who was in that mold. Uh, you know, so many people covered his work, continue to cover his work and his music, and to be influenced by it. And, uh, and sadly, he's been gone for quite some time, since 1997. Though, another fun fact, uh, th this album came out in 1972, yet dubs him the late, great 
Towns Van Zandt. A little bit of that doom and gloom prophesizing that can also certainly get me on board. Um, but to get into the record for a second, to make it a little bit of an unboxing, here's the cover. And the the back, which I won't zoom in on too much, but you're getting the nice bird there from Mr. Van Zandt. And the gatefold, got a nice little, some quality stock there. And inside on this particular reprint, which is of uh, only 1500 only, it's kind of a big number probably for, for a release like this, but uh, of 1500 on really nice 180 gram vinyl, very solid. It's that type of record, you just pick it up, you can just feel the the thickness and the weight, like the, just the just the really good quality of it right off of first feel. I like that. Plays really well on the on the record player. Obviously, no skips or problems. Just smooth as silk. Sound comes through brilliantly. A uh, little little cut out here in the, in the inside with this zoomed in picture. You really didn't need. And on the back here. Uh, just a few credits and a little bit of a, uh, a story uh, kind of getting into uh, what this, uh, what, what Towns Van Zandt was all about, uh, what these, you know, what some of the, what these songs were about and really kind of getting into sort of what, what the man was all about from a musical standpoint. And there are covers on here, uh, Honky Tonkin, like I said, the Hank Williams cover. Uh, Don't Let the Sunshine Fool You, which is really good, by Guy Clark. And uh, Heavenly Houseboat Blues, which is a Towns Van Zandt song, but it was uh, split writing credit with Susanna Clark. So, you get a mixture of some different things on this one. I gotta say, so far, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty impressed. It's right, it feels right at home in that, uh, in that, like I said, that folk country with a hint of blues genre. And there are nice moments of really picking up, like, that's very much like a, all that moments are very much like a Hank Williams vibe, or that one, you know, that kind of feels like a, a, a folky tenderness that like a, a John Denver would have exhibited, or, you know, any number of, of people like that, and just very much his own unique approach to this music. And I, for one, even though this is just a small sample size and one record, I'm, I'm very glad to to finally hear it and to put uh, the music with the man and you know the uh, the textures with the songwriter and really hearing his creations and I would certainly uh, recommend it like I said uh, as I went into discussing a little bit of you know older country music and stuff that always really appealed to me and continues to appeal to me now uh, I'd say he'd be a great one to, to look into because he's right in that genre with all of those other guys. Even though he was never known, he was horribly ravaged by addictions and, and problems and things like that. Uh, just like so many of them that, you know, so many that didn't make it and lucky few who did. And, you know, I would say that, you know, it's it's no frills, but it's really worth picking up. So I definitely would take a look at that. And uh, in addition, I you know, if, if anybody has any comments to add or something to add musically about this, by all means, of course, you know, leave something down below there because uh, I'm very intrigued. And, uh, you know, I'm really just very, very glad to be able to talk about it here today in this little uh, vinyl unboxing mixed with discussion. So I hope you enjoyed my little bit of, uh, of coverage here on Towns Van Zant. I hope you enjoyed the, the video. And until next time, guys, keep your music flowing and your vinyl spinning. I will see you all very, very soon.